friends. We're in a sunflower field that we planted three years ago. Now you're gonna ask yourself, how did you plant that three years ago and still have sunflowers there? Because we all know, um, these are this variety here is giant gray striped sunflowers, and they are an annual. Well, the way we got them here is we plant a little corn from time to time. This year we didn't plant any corn because of the horrible spring that we had, and it was too challenging to get that corn in and, and get a decent crop, so we just planted everything back into perennials. But that's a video down the road. Let's talk about these sunflowers. In 2017, we planted corn in here, and usually whenever I plant corn, it's not just corn that we plant. I'll plant sunflowers and squash and pumpkins and all kinds of things with that corn whenever we plant it. I just put everything in. We have a, a plateless planter with finger pickups, so I can run just about any kind of larger seed through it that those little fingers will pick up. But when we planted this field, I could only get my hands on a half a pound of giant gray stripe seeds. So we planted those seeds. They come up and we always have sunflowers in our cornfield. They're always pretty. It's a happy field. The way we get those there, those are actually volunteers. Spring of 2018, we drilled permanent grasses and clovers and chicory and you name it, it's in here. There's about nine different species that we put in here. Hey bud, what you doing? Scout, you saying hello? You saying hello, come here Scout. Here, good boy. And we did so after grazing it. We grazed it tight with the cattle. We basically, what you could call, overgrazed it, opting out from using an herbicide to kill the existing vegetation. We seen that there were a lot of sunflowers coming into this field. And usually with new seedings that we have, we will let them grow as long as possible to get as much establishment in the roots in those new plants before that we grape before we graze them. And in doing so, it was late last fall last year after the sunflowers. Seeded out. So the cows ate those sunflowers and they bypassed some of those sunflowers through the rumens. Plus they also trampled a lot of sunflower seeds. So in 2019, that's how we were able to have a three year stand of annual great giant gray striped sunflowers. And I can't see any reason why we can't go into a fourth year with this. Eventually, I'm, I'm gonna, eventually these sunflowers will probably die out and not reseed themselves. But you're probably asking yourself, well, why would I wanna try and graze sunflowers? Actually, out of all the forage tests and the hundreds and hundreds of samples of forage testing that I've done, the sunflowers are the best quality forage that we can produce on our farm. Raising sunflowers is actually high octane fuel for your livestock. I'll see if I can dig out a forage sample that we did a few years ago to give you some idea of what the sunflowers are like in this state of growth.
right, the cows won't graze those stems completely. But, you know, a sunflower, whenever the cows eat these sunflowers, they eat the head, the leaves, and usually about half the stalk. Once you get down past this point on the stalk, it usually gets too woody and they won't chew it or eat it. But that's okay, we can recycle that back into the soil for our earthworms and whatnot. And I guess a lot of folks, a lot of folks probably see some weeds in here also. Um, here's some ragweed, foxtail, fall panicum, Smart weed, red clover, orchard grass. see there's a lot of biodiversity and a lot of tonnage in here. We like to use the corn as kind of like I, I like to look at the cornfields as a reset button. If there's a field that's not doing so well or if we need to or if we want to or we don't necessarily need to switch the varieties or the species that's in that field we can come in with the corn and it's kind of resets the whole field. We can come in with the corn, plant the corn and then plant our permanent grasses in here or legumes or forbs or whatever else we're gonna plant or we can we can plant our, our permanent pastures into this this here's kind of an accident that we had and I'd like to share with you because I believe it can be re replicated pretty easily I like to come in and, and seed our permanent pastures usually by the 15th of May because then we still have adequate moisture in the soil to allow for good germination. Because with our longer rest periods on our farm, we don't graze a lot of fields multiple, multiple times throughout the growing season. We try to allow those rest periods to keep those grasses healthy and those root systems deep so they can assess nutrients that they normally wouldn't be able to get. And doing those long rest periods, we're able to keep these annuals here because this field here, this field here we will graze this fall after the sunflowers have gone to seed and some of them I see have already started to produce seeds you can see the seeds in there so I would say by mid-October we should be able to graze this and in grazing it we can reseed the pasture field and then in the spring we'll come back in here and I'm not sure when we'll grace this field. This field here actually looks like a really good stockpile for field. We may just wait. We just may wait until July or January, or as long as we possibly can to graze this field because it's so nice and high quality. Now I'm not sure what the quality would be after it dies and after it dies off. I haven't done that test yet. There is a ton of grass in here. A ton of soil life. This field actually feels like you're walking on a big sponge because of the earthworm middens and castings. You can see the granulation. I'm going to pull some, some grass back so you can see
whenever I think soil health, that's what I look at, or one of the indicators that I see for having healthy soil, having all that granulation and all that earthworm activity, and there's lots of insects in there, and a lot of times we can dig up earthworms and, and different things. But what that does is it helps water infiltration. You say, well, it's been a wet year. We don't need water infiltration. We've got too much water on our fields. Well, that water, in water infiltration will actually help you in a lot of ways, particularly in a grazing system. With that water, if you can get that water away from your livestock, as a general rule, what I'll do is Moving the livestock multiple times a day, as a general rule, if we're in the rainy season, we'll move our livestock up to 10 times a day. But as a general rule, what we'll do is whenever it stops raining, we go move the livestock. So what happens is, is the soils, as it rains, the cows pick up mud on their hooves and they tramp that onto the grass and that grass becomes unpalatable to them. So what they'll do is they'll start traveling a field and that's where we get a lot of our pugging and damage issues is them traveling looking for feed. And having that water infiltration and that, getting that water off the soil surface, it actually firms back up, it firms up and the livestock won't do near as much damage to the soil if you can get them moved whenever shortly after it rains. Anyhow, I thought I would share this with you. Hopefully you try it and maybe replicate it on your farm. Let me know how you do. Because this here is purely nothing more than an accident. I wasn't trying to do this, but I think it's a great thing. It's very exciting. Hey friends, that's it for now. Please subscribe, like, comment, and hit the notification bell. You don't know how important that is for us.